Welcome to Startup Spokane, where hosts Megan Halsey and Steve Traven explore the excitement and momentum growing throughout Spokane's startup community. Startup Spokane is brought to you in part by Greater Spokane Incorporated's Startup Spokane and Well-Dressed Walrus. Now, here are your hosts, Steve and Megan. Welcome to Startup Spokane on Spokane Talks Media, your podcast home for everything entrepreneurship related in the Spokane region. I'm your host, Steve Traben, joined as usual by Miss Megan Halsey. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, as you know, Startup Spokane is a program of Greater Spokane Incorporated. And whether you have an idea, you're launching, or you're growing your business, we're here to help you get access to the resources we'll, that will help you be successful. So, Megan, we have a very, very special guest today. So why don't you introduce yeah, we're really Emma. excited today that we are being joined by the Honorable David Condon, Mayor of Spokane. And Mayor, we know that entrepreneurship isn't something that's new to you. You have some experience in this. Can you tell us a little bit about your foray in entrepreneurship? Sure. I grew up uh, in a family that started several companies, everything from railroads to uh, railroad construction and demolition to tree sales uh, to um to uh, composting, to bakeries, you name it, uh, we did it. My, my personal experience, mm -hmm. although I started working when I was nine in the Christmas tree business, was um, I started a coffee company in Boston, mm -hmm. believe it or not. I did a marketing project uh, for, my, uh, for school uh, my sophomore year. And so in 1994, believe it or not, Starbucks was not in Boston. Uh, and so we became, a, 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 we sold Seattle's best coffee. Uh, and we had five little coffee stands in, in nice. banks and, uh, and one right at Downtown Crossing, which would, is right at the center of the retail district of Boston, um, at Filene's, which was a major department store. Uh, and so, you know, it was interesting. So I did that then for the balance of my college career. I did it for three more years, ran, you know, those, opened to new ones. Uh, did a couple more projects on it for school, so it worked out awesome. well. I did my senior thesis on it. Uh, they didn't have drive-throughs, and so at the time, you know, they were just starting to think about drive-throughs. It was completely foreign hmm. in the New England market. Yep. Uh, by my senior year, the Starbucks had come to town, uh, and they bought out a previous uh, small, I think, 13-store um, uh, business. But you know, right there at the beginning, so it was almost it was simultaneous. It was awesome to do it. Uh, I was a finance major, so most of my colleagues were on their way to New York. And they just thought it was crazy that, uh, that I would, and I must be this crazy guy from the West Coast uh, that would wake up at five, run down, start the business, get back, you know, for a nine o'clock class, run back down, you wow. know, so, uh, so, but uh, it really gave me a, you know, a, a real idea of what, um, you know, what it means, uh, you know, and, and how do you, how do you lead a small organization like that? How do you get funding? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we self-financed, I put $5,000 into yep. it. I think my dad gave us 15,000. <laughs> my brother wow. came out and he had 5,000. We literally bought all of our original product here in Spokane and loaded oh, it wow. into the 350 oh. pickup. They didn't have Costco's there right. either, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, so out here on North Foothills Drive, we bought our coffee, our first coffee cart from Boyd Coffee Company, put it in the back of the pickup, stopped by Costco, bought some tables with chairs, and and drove to drove to Boston. So. Be darn. Wow. That's quite That's a story, fantastic. isn't it? Yeah. So it's in your blood. It's yeah. in the DNA of the Condon family. Uh, mayor, let's let's now fast forward to, you know, you've had an incredible run as mayor of uh, the city of Spokane for eight years. And economic development is a, a big part of what you focus oh, absolutely, on. Absolutely. And entrepreneurship as a strategy for economic development. I'd really love to have you share with our viewers kind of, you know, what, what, you've, what you've seen, what you've experienced, what, how you've shaped it. I think um, you, have, you have a lot to share. Well, you know, I think, you know, in the economic development world, especially in government, a lot of folks quickly look at recruiting, which is important and mm -hmm. is a major component um, but really what's exciting um, is like a day today is, is um, on Coog's first day, you know, is looking at our universities and what are they producing, looking at uh, citizens that work in some of our companies now that have a new idea and take that idea to fruition. And, uh, and when you really look at it, in this, uh, the, the city of Spokane's um, growth dramatically was entrepreneurship. Right. Um, even in, you know, in the energy sector, whether mm -hmm. it's NG that now has a thousand plus employees, mm -hmm. international publicly traded company, ITRON, Reliance. So that's just in the energy 
space. Right. Mm-hmm. You look at the uh, egg and forestry world. You know what's happened with value add egg, uh, uh, egg. You know in the wine industry mm-hmm. and now value add in other areas. It's exciting for me to see uh, that WSU through their research is looking at gluten free uh, products and what does that mean and how do you develop it um, in the forestry area. You know this is you know the future of the built environment of looking at CLT cross laminated timber yep. coming out of the forestry industry. So these are things that were intrinsic, you know, and I haven't even touched on on life sciences, right. but uh, you look at the companies, those were developed here. And so there's kind of a couple of key components. One is we do need to do the research here, whether it be in companies and they're mm-hmm. doing their own R&D. Um, we need to make sure we have the, the, the ability to patent that. And so some of the you know leading patent firms are right here in the city. And then you need to also have uh, you know organizations like Startup because this, this is a network. Everybody wants to see often, and especially in government, very hierarchical. It starts here and it ends here. Right. Well... I'll tell you, in, in the world of entrepreneurship, it does not start on the left side of the graph right. and end on the right. Uh, there's a circle and a route and a right. backtrack yeah. and a whoops, it didn't work. Yeah. And and so you can't really do it that way. And so really a healthy uh, um, entrepreneurial, you know, is, is an ecosystem. It is exactly. not, a, you know, it is not a direct line. Um, and so ecosystems are tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, people spend their lives studying the ecosystem of an amoeba. Uh, yep. Well, the entrepreneurial ecosystem is no different, but to sit there and make it look uh, streamlined and it, it, it does not make it effective. Yeah. Uh, and so, startup of putting this network together, keeping the network alive, finding out where uh, there's a uh, there's a gap in the ecosystem, figuring out who can fill that. So it's very complex. And that's why it's so critical for entrepreneurs. I get it all the time. And now I literally can send them to startup and, and say, well, you know, whether if startup doesn't have it, they definitely have the ecosystem that knows who does have it. Right. Um, and so that's exciting. And so, you know, as, at the city, we have funded some of that. Yep, you know, sure with, Thank you. Know, you. But it's also about connecting this and also having a culture. You know, like I said, my experience when I was in New England going to school, entrepreneurship is not in the, was not at the time in the DNA. Now, I'll tell you, Boston has gone gangbusters mm-hmm. on this. But at the mm-hmm. time, you went to business school, you either went to New York and you went to finance, and you went where, you know, in a lot of cases where your dad used to, you know, where there was some connection. They didn't have this entrepreneurial spirit. You know, if you're an accountant, you stayed in Boston, the big five were there. We have always had that, I think, in the West, mm-hmm. but we also need to get it even more and that it's supported. I, you know, I, I sit there and think even in city government, you know, I, th- I at one time thought, you know, should we have star- startup in city hall? Oh, Steve, mm-hmm. you yeah. were leading yeah. it. No, where, yeah. where do we yeah. do this? And I just thought it would be an amazing experiment to have yeah. startup uh, folks sitting in the elevator with a city employee that's been there for 27 <laughs> years, and they're doing amazing things and talking to someone who's leaving at 6 in the morning because they just pulled an all-nighter because they're trying to get a package ready for maybe right. financing or something. And yeah. go, well, what are you doing today? Well, I'm coming to work. It's 8 o'clock. And, well, I'm going home. And, you know, someone's <laughs> saying, well, what do you do for insurance? Well, I don't really know. And, you know, and so, yeah. you know, and I just thought, it, and, and we've tried to foster that culture in City Hall mm-hmm. of an entrepreneur's, you know, feeling for what we do in government. No, and, and which is critical. It's not really only good. for-profit yeah. business. We need that entrepreneurial system in government and nonprofits. And, I, and we have it. But you need to have the ecosystem that supports it. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Thank you for saying all of that. Yeah. And so what role does the city play in fostering that entrepreneurship? You talked a little bit about how the ecosystem thrives, but what's your role and how do you actually create programs or systems that encourage those companies to take root? Uh, well, I think first and foremost is um, to tell the story to see the successes that we have had Mm -hmm. and the growth. And like I said, when you really look at some of our true growth, it is from uh, the the basis of our industries here and to highlight what those industries are, but where are they innovating? I, I I would venture to guess if you sent out to the public and you say, what do you want to, you know, what are your first thoughts when you think about the egg industry? They're going to quickly go to traditional egg, combines mm-hmm. out on the, that is not the reality. Yeah. We have the third top finance uh, organization in the United States right here in Spokane that finances yep. uh, innovation. I went to their innovation summit in egg. And the last thing you saw, I mean, you saw drones. You yeah, I was going to say, it's all yeah, going yeah, autonomous, right? You saw right? autonomous yeah. combines, you saw drones, you saw, and it's, and it's getting after being resilient and sustainable. So it's, you know, and a lot of times, so I think one of them is the bully pulpit of the mayor office and as a, as a city to talk about this and identify and be very proud and identify true foundational 
things of what we're doing. The second, you brought it up, it really is uh, programmatic mm -hmm. and, and partners. It's, you know, it's P2 and it's P, you know, and so yes, we need to publicize it, uh, but we also need to work through our partners. Uh, people don't go, I'm gonna start a business and I'm gonna go to City Hall. Well, that's, you know, and that's not a reality. Yeah. We do it through partners like Startup and so many others that are in these areas, industry mm -hmm. associations. And so where we can financially support those, we need to do that for job growth. Um, and then we also need to hold ourselves accountable to what programs are working because in ecosystem things come and go and That's so right. often yeah. too often too often in government we, you know you start a program it never it never ends because it's just too difficult and that's why working with partners especially in this space yeah. because what was good yesterday i mean quite frankly is not good next year so exactly. as you're sitting there looking at this you need to or a, a new player comes on the scene and they really are filling that gap so you don't need to do that anymore um, so it needs to be you know you need to publicize what we're doing you need to work through our partners and then you really need to hold ourselves accountable for the programs that are operating and making sure that they're meeting the needs. Yeah, and Mary, you've been just uh, a real champion of the the public private partnerships as it regards entrepreneurship. And I, you know, we've had lots of conversations about where we put things in City Hall and some other surplus city properties that exist yeah. around uh, the community. But um, I mean, your sense have we we've made good progress? Well, I'll tell you, we have. And leading uh, question, obviously. Well, no, and I mean, and I think you guys, you, you know, you say it in spades. You see these companies that are growing here. You're now seeing, um, you know, startup put out. Uh, this is, you know, we have the image about really now uh, companies are looking at if we're going to start up, we're going to go to Spokane. You know, more recently, just one top of mind mm -hmm. right now, Rover is a right. new yeah. tech company in the uh, in the animal care, you know, sector. Um, their uh, their development is happening in Seattle. When I visited them, just probably probably eight months ago in their offices, they had about 35, 50 people. They just leased a floor and a half of the new Wonder Building that'll hold hundred or a couple hundred people, if not more. Yeah. And they really okay. see the benefit, the talent pool. That's why one I didn't touch on, but entrepreneurs do want that talent. And you know, so how do we incorporate the universities? How do we incorporate the community colleges? Um, you know, in, in, in a family of entrepreneurs, uh, about half of us uh, have uh, college degrees and the other half don't. And, and I'll be honest with you, that it, ha it has had no direct impact on right. what the outcome of those success of those businesses were, yeah. as I look at it. Um, and so that's exciting to see. Good. Well, I mean, we're having a great holistic conversation <laughs> with the mayor of the city of Spokane, David Condon. Stay with us. We'll be right back on Startup Spokane on Spokane Talks Media. They say it takes a community to raise a family. It also takes one to build a business. I came to Spokane 12 years ago as a Whitworth student, and I planned to leave after graduation. But the more I got to know this community, the more I wanted to become a part of it. My husband and I have built our business in Spokane, and now we're raising our family here too. We operate a consulting company that provides creative business development strategies. Our approach is holistic and dependent on intentional connections and relationships. And no one understands connections and relationships better than GSI. They direct momentum towards investments in our community, provide resources that help business leaders connect, and they're dedicated and passionate about making Spokane great. GSI gives me the confidence to build my business here because they believe every organization, even a small one like mine, adds big value to our community. With GSI's help, Spokane will be a place my son will want to build his career too. I'm Eva Marquette, owner of Freshview. We're creating something greater with Greater Spokane Incorporated. Hi, this is Kurt Stockwell with Well-Dressed Walrus. We are a local website design and development company here in Spokane. What we do is build beautiful, usable websites for local businesses. The website needs to be beautiful. It needs to be usable for your users, your customers, and yourself. Contact us anytime. We'd love to talk with you about your online marketing. Welcome to a new kind of talk show, Spokane Talks, where you find news, views, and conversations that include respect for opinions, facts, and diversity. Spokane Talks, Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Fox 28. Welcome back. We're having a fantastic conversation with Mayor Condon about entrepreneurship 
in the city of Spokane. And Mayor, uh, we, we covered a lot of ground before our first break, so thank you. It was awesome. I want to take a couple of minutes and just talk about why Spokane is really the perfect place for uh, people to uh, look to move here to start and grow and run a business. Well, absolutely, uh, you know, and working with startup and looking, I mean, first and foremost, what is the cost, right? And, and seeing how much farther the dollars go, I think we have a graphic that we can put up, uh, but some 85% farther in Spokane. And so as you're talking to venture capitalists and others, when they know that their money's not gonna be tied up in overhead and, and you know class A office space rent and things like that, and really goes towards the talent. Number two is what I just said, is having access uh, to that talent. Yep. And with uh, you know with the universities, seventy thousand students, you know we really are starting to see that talent that are that are uh, part of that culture that want to try something new, you yeah. know. And so as you're coming out of college or maybe two or three years out, uh, that, those folks are really attracted uh, to working with a small co- a small company, a startup, being on something new. And so you need to have that that talent. Yeah. Pool. And it doesn't really require them to export out, right? To exactly. find jobs. So as it we... really is. It's, it's a combination where you know we started with well, let's start and you know do startup and grow from within and entrepreneurship, right. but it works both directions. Right. You know, the third piece, you know, so if it's cost first, absolutely access to talent yeah. so that they can build this. The number three is is a quality of life. A lot of yeah. your entrepreneurs yeah. are leaving, uh, say, corporate life because of a quality of life decision. And that's where we launched Hacking Washington. Yeah. And, you know, this is, this is uh, you know, that life hack. How can you, um, how can you have a shorter commute? How can you have access to the outdoors? How can you work hard? But play hard, right. um, and a lot of folks that are in that culture, you know, and me included, um, and many of ours want that life. And so we launched Hacking Washington, um, really focused on the I five corridor, mm-hmm. uh, focused on alumni of our universities, and bringing them back to Spokane and showing them what's going on right now and what they can have, whether they can buy their first house, whether they can um, have access to the outdoors, what our life's, what our you know, light, nightlife is, and what our arts are. Mm-hmm. And so I invite folks to go to Hacking Washington. Washington.com. Uh, you can also go to, you know, and how do you hack Washington? You choose Spokane. That's right. Um, and so you can go to choose Spokane. That's our economic development portal for the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and really look at, you know, what's available um, uh, to small uh, and startup businesses. And it's working. I just had a, a gentleman that's on his second startup quite far through the startup. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has closed on his third round of, of VC funding in the 100 million range, but looking at looking for the talent. He, he's yep. following talent, to be honest with you. His talent wants to live in Spokane, and they realize that if they want to keep that talent, they need to they need to look at Spokane as an option. And so that's happening. I mentioned Rover, same thing. They followed talent. They also followed, uh, you know, hearing from their, their senior management, of, of looking at the resiliency um, of Spokane. Literally, the you know they run a 24-7 worldwide operation. So does this other uh, organization. And looking at Spokane and the resiliency we have of whether it's power production or whether whether it's uh, the weather and you know those sorts of things, that's a real reality to them, uh, notwithstanding the impacts of what happens sometimes on the I-5 corridor. Right. Well, and I have to say that I see the results of that daily, too. I have people coming in saying, well, we've just moved back. We just made this leap. And we're hopeful that we can find the employment that will back that up because yep. we need to change our life. What we were doing in Silicon Valley or Seattle or Portland, it just wasn't working for us. And so that's been really interesting to see. Not only are we keeping more of our local homegrown talent or talent from the universities, but we're also attracting talent from yeah. these other hub you know, cities. And literally the last 24 hours, I met a, a gentleman that moved up from Southern California uh, he bought a, a company here in Spokane. I have to give it to the company owners. Uh, they decided to sell to him because he was going to keep it local. Their mm-hmm. other option was to sell it mm-hmm. to, a, to a regional company that would have you know, t- taken over the client base but not moved the office here. Right. And so they wanted that local ownership. The second one was a gentleman uh, that moved and, and bought another company and he moved over uh, from the west side. Uh, his, his wife uh, got a, a senior job over here and he bought another company yep. and moved over and left the corporate. And so they really, you're starting to see yeah. in a major way this yeah. coming. Yeah. And you know, even I want to build on that just for a second. That one of the observations I have is we're bringing in these individuals that are globally connected. It's, so yeah. the, the network, the, the relational networks are continuing to just, you know, spread virally for us and, and getting us into 
other connections that we wouldn't have otherwise if not for these What's people What's been really here. fun, too, is, is as some of our startups have grown, it's allowed us to start making connections outside of our area as they start to outgrow the capital resources that are available here. We can put them in touch through these relationships with investors who will take them to the next phase. Yeah, and in fact, we, we, we won't give specifics, but we're working with a startup that was funded by Mind to Market, and they were just down in the Silicon Valley making a presentation mm -hmm. this week, I think for the second time, yeah. and those connections would not have come if not for some of the people that we've attracted to yes. live in our region. So, and so it definitely is a, it's a, it's a cost issue and, and where that investment is, it's a talent piece, right. but then it's also so uh, how do we differentiate ourselves as a city, as a region, as a metropolitan area? And then how do we celebrate it? So yeah. last yeah. year we had the first ever foreground um, and really looking at uh, the arts, looking at business, looking at education, mm -hmm. um, and, and really who's on the forefront? Who is laying right. the foreground for the future in each and one of those areas? So it's exciting to see whether we have venture capitalists coming into town with the Angel Alliance, then they're going to something like Terrain, or they're mm -hmm. going to a, a, a nationally, if not internationally, uh, uh, notarized uh, speaker. And so that's, uh, it'll be the couple of first weeks of October. Right. Um, um, and really, I invite people to you know check it out. You'll see what happened last year if you go to the Foreground website uh, and really looking at that program because we need to not only uh, celebrate to ourselves, which mm -hmm. is very important because yeah. often I find, which is mind-boggling, that people don't know what's going on. Even locally. But right. locally, but then also invite people into, into town to see what's yeah. happening. Yeah, exactly. I think the broader awareness piece is incredible, and Foreground is just a really great um, – foundation for doing that. It's sort of like Spokane's uh, version of South by Southwest. You know, I was right? just yeah. down at South by Southwest <laughs> my first time. I was uh, with 25 mayors down there, and they invite us down to look at what's at the forefront of government mm -hmm. uh, and, and what are we doing. So they have a whole track now called Civic IQ of, of really looking, you know, and it was fascinating to me. I'd never been to, to South by Southwest, and, and really that's what Foreground will start looking like, of what's happening here. What are right. we doing with Urbanova and the Smart City Initiative? What are we doing in the entrepreneurial scene? What are we doing in the educational uh, scene? What are we doing in the arts, and how do we bring this together right. and celebrate it and then show it off to the to the region. A absolutely. So, yeah. Mayor, as you're coming to the end of your second term, and I mean, you're you're well loved by uh, lots of lots of people, all of your citizens. I think everyone says, I hear all the time, the best mayor we've ever had. So thank well, you for your that, service. Yeah. What do you hope for, for the future of entrepreneurship? I mean, what, you know, is there something we need to keep our eye foc eyes focused on? Don't take your eye off this ball. What, what, um, what advice do you have for, say, the next, the you next know, round of leadership yeah, at the sure. city of Spokane? You know, a couple of years ago, we launched One Spokane. It's our strategic vision, uh, our strategic plan, um, and really our strategic voice. And we need to keep that going. And these are all tenants uh, that really lead us to a, a healthy environment or entrepreneurial uh, culture. And um, often, you know, you know, and especially in government, we look for uh, for direct outcomes. And I would suggest, and especially in this scene, we need to do that. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said from the start, uh, this is an ecosystem, yeah. and ecosystems are very temperamental. Um, you know, one of our biggest projects is uh, is cleaning up the Spokane River. So I get very involved in the biosciences of the Spokane River. This is no different, right? Um, and we need to continue to do that. I also think as we look, um, if there's a focus area, is to continue to attract and grow uh, entrepreneurial companies. We mean, where, what are the patents coming out of our companies? It's very important to have them come out of our universities, but I would say it's more important to have companies that are focused on internal research. Absolutely. Um, and then also, if you could do that, then build it on what are our financial or what are our foundational. Um, um, uh, industries and so in energy, in life sciences, mm -hmm. in ag forestry, because we have amazing, amazing talent in those. In all of those, when you look to the future, when you look at what's happening in food science and diet and health, and you know, in our planet and the use of water and sustainability, you look at energy and you think about what that impact is on all of those uh, those areas. You look at health. Um, and, the, you know, and I'll tell you, when you bring those three together, 
uh, that's where Spokane is on the tip of the spear there, and we need to continue to do that. But we need to keep that ecosystem alive, and it it starts every day. And it you know, and you yes. and, and you don't pat yourself on the back as an accomplishment and job well done or, or job finished or mission complete. Yeah. Uh, yes, you celebrate your successes, but you, you know, like many entrepreneurs know, you, the day you take a vacation, things start things start rolling back. So yeah. the work is cut I, off. I was going to say, how does that resonate? Megan's leadership and your <laughs> leadership. To, to be this, I mean, eight years ago, to have the idea of an ecosystem of, of startup was a, a fantasy. I remember meeting right. in my conference I, I room, sitting there going, uh -huh. well, heck, can we throw out some of these, you know, cubicles here on the seventh mm -hmm. floor and start something there? <laughs> uh, but to see people come and really do that uh, and to see that, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm glad yeah, that I'm glad that you've shared that, and, and that's what you've seen from your perspective. Because I yeah. think when, we, when you started eight years ago, uh, lots of parts and pieces, yeah. uh, but they just weren't. You know, it, it wasn't all put together. Worked, yeah. No. Yeah. So, and Megan, how does all this resonate with you? Um, well, you know, I think that the the likening of it to any delicate ecosystem is really spot on because every day we're adjusting and. Um, you know, drawing new things into the ecosystem and then there's adjustments that happen and identifying new gaps that have opened up or new opportunities. Um, and so, yeah, it's absolutely keeping that going. And I think that's one of the things that startup is really plugged into is knowing where, who's doing what, where, and how it's changing so that we can make sure that we're not leaving wide open gaps. Yeah, I think, I mean, your the mission of startup is really continually to look at the gaps yeah. and the needs and, and filling those. Mayor Condon, thank you so Thanks much for, for taking me. time out of your busy schedule today to share your wisdom and, uh, and knowledge that you have in your DNA on entrepreneurship. <laughs> Thanks for your tremendous leadership. We're going to miss you. Uh, join I'm us. I'm not for going anywhere. Okay, I know. Good. That's <laughs> yes. good. I'm glad you're staying around because you'd be a great asset to the community. Uh, join us for future podcasts where we uh, host other resources and entrepreneurs on Startup Spokane on Spokane Talks Media. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Startup Spokane is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksMedia.com, which is solely responsible for its content. Startup Spokane is brought to you in part by Greater Spokane Incorporated's Startup Spokane and Well-Dressed Walrus. Ask Steve and Megan a question, recommend a guest, or hear this program again on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or SpokaneTalksMedia.com.